Hallelujah. Anybody know that he is a savior? I'm, how many know that he is the Lord our God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you this morning on 2024 Palm Sunday. Can we put our hands together? As we think about the triumphant entry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he was riding through Jerusalem, the people shouted, Hosanna. Can we shout Hosanna this morning? Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Ho Can we in the balcony shout Hosanna in the highest? Hallelujah. Woo. He's Hosanna. And we thank him this morning. We greet you with the joy of the Lord this morning. In the name of our Lord, Hosanna, Jesus Christ, as well as those of you who are streaming virtually, we greet you this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody excited about what the Lord is going to do in the sanctuary? Hallelujah. As we go to the Father in prayer, Lord, we thank you so much for this day, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father, and starting us on our way, Father. And Father, we just say thank you for being Hosanna this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for your triumphant entry into Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. Father, we just stand in confidence, Lord God, in what it is that you're getting ready to do in our lives this morning in the sanctuary, Father. And we're asking you, Lord God, to do as you always do, Father. Have your way in this place, Lord God. Yes, we have an agenda, but Father, we ask that your spirit rest, rule, and abide most importantly in this day, Lord God. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you look over the preacher for the hour and all of those who are part of the worship experience, Lord God. Father, we're asking you and thanking you in advance, Lord God that lives will be changed forever, Lord God, and souls will be changed, Lord God, and souls will be saved and edified in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask you all these things. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Put those hands together and shout Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Come on, keep clapping. Hallelujah. We lift up your name, Father. We give you the glory. We thank you for waking us up this morning. Anybody grateful to be here? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on and clap your hands like this, Alan. Oh.
Did anybody come to lift him? Did anybody come to lift him? I don't know about you, but I came out this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. Hey! Hey! Somebody lift his name. Some of you too busy lifting your problems. Some of you too busy lifting your burdens. Some of you too busy lifting the laptop, lifting the computer, lifting the telephone. But he said, if I be lifted up, I will. Sorry. I will not think about it, but I will draw without your permission. Without your say so, without your authority, all you gotta do is live. Somebody just lift him up right quick. Just lift him up. 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 If you lift him, he'll lift the burden. If you lift him, he'll destroy the oak. If... Cause after I lift him up, <laughs> God's got a blessing. All you got to do is lift him. Tell somebody, say, that's your responsibility lift this week. Lift up the name of Jesus. Keep it high above your problem. Your in- Come on. Because if you do that, look at somebody and say, God's got a blessing. Let's go, y'all. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. God's got a blessing. Say, it's got your name on it. Come on, y'all. How many people are ready for your blessing? Are you ready for your blessing?
everybody in the balcony. Hey, hey. God, God bless. God, God bless. Oh, yeah. Say, God, God bless. God, God bless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, God, God bless. God, God bless. Oh, yeah. Say, God, God bless. God, God bless. Hey, come on, everybody. Say, hey, God, God bless. Hallelujah, and our decree should be, I don't want anybody else's blessing either. Because God knows exactly what we can handle. Amen. 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 Tell somebody, you, you think you want what I have, but you don't know what I had to do to get it. And you don't know how much work I got to put in to keep it. <laughs> For whom much is given, much is required. Hallelujah. We bless him and celebrate God and all of his blessings toward us today. And even with that in mind, as we have entered into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, this is our opportunity to come humbly yet boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Don't you know everything that Jesus did this week was so that we could have direct access to the Father. Aren't you glad that you don't have to ask someone else to get a prayer through for you? But you can talk to God all by yourself. And with that in mind, we do regret to announce the passing of Sister Patricia Duncan, one of our church members. We're praying for her family. We're praying for your family. Come on, family. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we give you glory and honor. And we thank you for every blessing that you provided for us, oh God, with our names on it. We give you glory and honor, God. We thank you, Father. For the life and legacy of Sister Duncan, we thank you, O oh God, for blessing us with the opportunity to sojourn with her. And now, God, we're praying that you will give comfort and peace to her family and to our church family alike. God, that you would surround every grieving soul today, O oh God, in your embrace. Allow them to feel the warmth of your presence, to know that you are Jehovah Shammah, the God who is right here with us. Thank you, Emmanuel, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we still believe that you are the God that heals us of all sin, sickness, and disease. And so, God, we lift every burden to you. Your word tells us to cast every care upon you. So, God, we cast upon you cancer today. 
we cast upon you high blood pressure. We cast upon you, oh God, sickle cell. We cast upon you every sickness and disease, no matter how great or small. You are the God that heals of HIV and AIDS and the God who heals of the common cold. God, we put it all in your hands. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for healing today. We thank you for deliverance today. We thank you for breakthrough today. That you don't just heal us of our physical infirmity, but God, you touch us of our mental dis-ease. Oh God, you give peace and comfort to every mind that is confused. Oh God, you give restoration, oh God, to that which has been taken from us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. And we say, God, we give you room and place and space to do whatever you want to do in our life. God, we just want to make sure that whatever is done is done to your glory and done unto your honor. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we're excited about what we are in anticipation of. Thank you, God, for the healing. Thank you for the miraculous breakthrough. Thank you, God, for giving answers to questions. And thank you, God, for salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you believe it and you're thankful. Put your hands of celebration together and tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just tell them hallelujah. Come on, can I get you to shout out with a loud praise? Hallelujah. Come on, wherever you're sitting, just begin to lift your hands and glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, say. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. To the Lord. To the Lord. Come on, church, sing it with us. Say it again. Hallelujah, say. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power unto the Lord. For the Lord our God is mighty. Come on. For the Lord our God is mighty. Come on. You can sing it. For the Lord. Come on. The Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God. Come on. Tell somebody he's wonderful. Yeah, God. Let's say that one more time. For the Lord, come on, time. The Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God. The Lord our God. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. Come on, say, oh, oh,
That's how y'all feel about him? That's how y'all feel about him? He's wonderful. See, I'm so glad I grew up in a church <laughs> that destroyed me with eight words. Made me come out of character with eight words. When I think of the goodness, let me see if I know how to count. Of Jesus. Oh! Sorry, y'all. I had to get that out. Some of y'all understand what that meant. <laughs> Somebody just said, let me finish it for him. And all he's done for me. What did he do for you then? George 
what did he do for you? Wyatt, what did he do? Elvis, what did he do for you? T.R. Jay Carson, you in the white robe, you gonna tell somebody what did he do? Come on. This is what he done for me. He picked me up. And when I thought he couldn't do it, he turned. So, I need these kids up here to shout, hallelujah. If I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. They told me. If you act up at home, when you get in the street, you're going to act up in the street, too. Come on, play the intro. Hey! I know y'all feel bad. Come on, yeah. Let's do this. I get it so... I know y'all felt that shift in the atmosphere. I'm not my oh my Come on. We sit right here.
yesterday. Holy Ghost. What I said in the garden, what I said. Here we go. open your mouths and fill this room. This is Palm Sunday. Amen. Just open your mouths with a hallelujah, with the glory to God. Or you may even do what they did on that Palm Sunday. Just cry out, Hosanna, which is, Lord, help us. Lord, be with us. Lord, heal us. Lord, deliver us. Hosanna. Come on, let's just worship the Lord for a minute. Come on, fill this room, fill this room. Fill this room with praise. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He who reigns forever. He who reigns forever. We give you praise. We honor you on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of the Most High. Now put your hands together, even as you go to your seats. Amen. We greet you today in the name of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Even on this Palm Sunday, we know that he did rise. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. He did rise. Listen, if there are any visitors here today, we'd love for you to stand. And certainly we welcome our online congregation. Uh, we are grateful for your presence with us virtually. And if there are any visitors in the sanctuary, won't you please stand? God bless you. God bless you, my sisters and brothers. We greet you today with the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're so grateful that you chose to worship with us today. We're grateful, amen, that of all the churches in New York City, you decided, you chose us. So please remain standing, and members of our church family, if you see someone standing around you, won't you just stretch out your hand, wave to them, smile, make them feel welcome, amen. And today, the coffee hour is hosted by the Shepherd's Ministry, and they would be most appreciative if you would go down and, um, and uh, uh, let them serve you. Uh, the communications committee is looking for a few good volunteers. 
to look through our archives to gather, sort, and organize photographs. That sounds exciting. Digital media to be used for upcoming legacy events. We need all the pictures we can get. And so if you are, if you are interested, if you're willing to donate uh, some of your time, won't you please, uh, it says that the committee registration will open up next week. So they will be in the Narthex area to receive you on next week. We are looking forward to tomorrow night, March 25th, with our four women at the Cross Service. This is sponsored by the Women's Ministry, but all are welcome. Please, brothers, come out and support us. Uh, we have four dynamic uh, young women, Dr. Sharika Newton, Pastor T. Ann Brown Williams, Pastor Melaine Rochford, and our very own Marissa Farrell. They will be preaching on tomorrow night. The service is at 7.30. And because we will be in service, two things. Uh, we, we will cancel uh, the women's Bible study for tomorrow night as well as uh, the prayer call. We will cancel those so that we can all gather here in the sanctuary. Also, we are looking forward to Thursday. That is Holy Thursday. That is the night that Jesus supped with his disciples and uh, served communion to them. Uh, and we have a dynamic preacher, Pastor Jerry Carter, will be here to be our guest preacher. And we certainly hope that you will come out and, um, and receive communion. You know, Holy Week is about worship anyway. We're supposed to go to church during Holy Week. And so please, please, please come out uh, tomorrow night and then come out on Thursday night. Uh, and, of course, we all know that we gather in the sanctuary at 12 noon on Good Friday to have the seven last words of Jesus. And certainly we hope that you will join us then. Our Ignite Youth Ministry and our Sunday School will come together on Resurrection Sunday at the 1130 hour. The beautiful resurrection, amen. They will be in the banquet hall uh, at 1130, the Sunday School, and Ignite will come together. I know it will be a dynamic program. And for those of you, especially who have your young children, who you have young people that you want to support, we encourage you to do just that. And remember that after their uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday program, they will be served, they will have a bake sale to raise money for scholarships. I love it. Children raising money for big, for their uh, older uh, the older members of their community so that they can go to school. That is great, and certainly we hope that you will support them. Also, the Allen Liturgical Dance Ministry and the GAC Fitness Ministry will host a praise party and fitness fundraiser on March 30th at 12 P. That's 12 noon to 2 p.m. in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. Uh, this workout includes praise and worship, chair exercise. That's right up my alley. Chair, <laughs> chair exercise, yoga, and African dance. That's not up my alley. Uh, <laughs> tickets will be available in the Cathedral Bookstore, and all proceeds will go toward our mortgage elimination. So that's Thursday, right? The 30th. That's Saturday. Oh, on, on Saturday after Good Friday. Okay, okay, okay. D D Jesus was resting on Saturday. <laughs> and y'all got the folk working out. Okay, all right. I get it, I get it. Listen, the women's conference registration is closed. Amen. We are grateful for that. And we are looking forward to gathering uh, in Stamford, Connecticut on April 11th through 13th. But for those of you who are, were, were already unable to attend, we will have a virtual option for you that will allow you to stream uh, most of the conference, amen. Virtual registration and details are available on the church website.
Amen. Please check it out if you can't come and join us virtually. The Cancer Support Ministry will have a mammogram van in the church parking lot on Tuesday, April 23rd. We need you to register today, ladies, in the Narthex area or uh, uh, at the church office Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4. Please contact the church office to register if you cannot register today. But this is so critical, so important, and we certainly hope that you will avail yourself to this opportunity if you need to do so. Let the church say amen. 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 Save the day. Our legacy luncheon will take place on Saturday, May 18th at Floral Terrace at 12 noon. Tickets will go on sale Monday, April 1st, in person and online. We certainly hope that you will join us in the first of many legacy celebrations. Tickets will go on sale in person and online on April 1st. And then, of course, we do remind you to save the date for the Flake Legacy Weekend. Uh, that will be March 31st through Sunday, June 2nd. Amen. It will be an exciting weekend of nostalgic gatherings as we are also creating new memories with cherished friends and family. We hope that many will come back as some we have not seen in a while. But the Flake Legacy uh, celebration will begin and we're going to celebrate it in our own special way. Now, Saturday, June 1st <clears throat> is Legacy Community Day. Uh, this day will begin with prayer in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock a.m. And then it's going to be followed by a special celebration in parking lot number two, which is that one over there, just like we did for the street naming. And so we certainly hope that you will join us there. And then on Sunday, June 2nd, we will end with our guest preacher, Bishop Jackie McCullough. And I'm looking forward to that. Amen. We thank God for all that God continues to do in our midst. And certainly uh, we're grateful that in this women's season, uh, God has certainly uh, blessed us with great events. We had a good, good time yesterday. I learned some things about my children that I did not know. Uh, and when we have dinner today, I have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. Amen. It is giving time at the cathedral. It is giving time at the cathedral. Amen. This is the time that we give back to God, just a portion of that which God gives to us. If there are any blessed individuals in the sanctuary, won't you just wave your hand? If God has been good to you and you know that God has done uh, in so many instances exceedingly abundantly more than you would have anticipated. You never knew when you were a little boy, little girl running around what God was going to do in your life. Uh, you have seen God do great and marvelous things. And when we think about his goodness and when we think about the creativity of his, uh, how he works out his plan, uh, we cannot help but say thank you. And we certainly cannot help but uh, uh, celebrate uh, by giving back to the Lord just a portion of that which he gives us. He tells us to bring gifts, bring, make sacrifices, to bring it to the storehouse. In the Old Testament, he says, bring it to the storehouse there, that there might be meat in my house. In other words, that there might be uh, resources there for me to do uh, the work for the Lord to do the work that uh, he needs to be done in the kingdom. And in the New Testament, he says, give, it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaking together, running over back in good measure. It will be poured into your lap. And many of us can boast, we can thank God today that we have experienced blessings, a lap full of blessings, amen. And so we hope that you will take this opportunity to give and give generously. Uh, if you're giving electronically um, uh, at home, the, the giving instructions are on the screen. If you're giving electronically here, the giving instructions. 
uh, on the screen, right? And if you are not giving electronically and you are giving in person, please prepare your gifts now and the offices will be in place to receive them as you depart from the sanctuary. Let the church say amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, I said praise the Lord, everybody. For a moment, all over the sanctuary, can you lift up your voice and just thank the Lord for his sacrifice? Come on, all over the room. Come on, somebody just tell him thank you this morning. Come on. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. Come on, I can't hear you in the room. I need somebody to shout thank you. Hallelujah. We love you today, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your sacrifice. Great I am, Holy One of Israel. We honor you today. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Song is simple. It's just like this. Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna. Come on, one voice. Everybody sing Hosanna. Come on. Come on, lift those hands and sing in the highest. That's it. Come on, sing. Let our king be lifted up, everyone. Come on, one more time. Stay right there. Lift those hands. Hosanna. In the highest. Fill them in the room. Sing, let our king be. Hosanna. Let's sing it up. Hosanna. That's it. In the highest. Sing, let our king Everybody grab the party. Hosanna. 
today we have come to lift the king. Before I read the scripture, if you are the owner of an automobile and your license plate number happens to be LCV, L is in Larry, C is in Charlie, V is in Victory, 1110, uh, you need to attend to your car right now. Amen. And of course, um, we pray that all is well when you get there. Uh, n nothing serious, but it is serious. You're blocking the driveway. Before I read, too, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of the president of the New York City City Council, uh, <laughs> President Adrienne Adams. We're always happy to have her here. Amen. We're always happy to have her here with us. Amen. One of our own. Praise the Lord. Amen. Going to ask you to turn your attention to the Palm Sunday scripture as recorded by the physician Luke. Luke chapter 19. We are going to begin reading at verse 37. This is the word of the Lord. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God and loud voice in loud voices for all of the miracles they had seen. What did they scream? What did they praise? Blessed be the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace on earth and glory in the highest. Amen. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And then Jesus said, I tell you, if they keep quiet the stones will cry out. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning briefly about out of control praise. Out of control praise. Out of control praisers. Amen. You may go to your seat. My brothers and sisters, I think if we are honest, most of us would have to admit that we want, we need, we want to feel like we are in control of uh, our lives, especially certain aspect of our lives. And the truth is not being in control, not uh, uh, knowing what's going to happen can be a very frightening and um, unwanted reality. And that can be emotionally depleting, not being in control, not, not knowing will send us uh, to places of fear and anxiety and even desperation. We want to be in control. Uh, uh, we want to be in control of our present, and we want to have some kind of uh, harness, uh, some kind of say in our future. You can say amen. We want to call the shots. We want to determine our outcomes. And if the truth be told, some of us want to instruct God on how God should intervene in the world and in our lives. As much as we say that we trust God, as much as we say, oh, yeah, it's in God's hands, as much as we declare the sovereignty of God, I would suggest that there are some of us uh, uh, that would have to say that uh, we would rather determine the trajectory of our lives orchestrate our circumstances and um, you know and 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 not just have to walk into an unknown future even though we say and we are walking into that future with God the truth is though that a part of faith a part of our faith walk is learning how not to crave control over our lives. A part of our faith walk is having the courage and having the common sense often to allow God to order our steps and determine our course. 
a part of the faith walk is bowing at the altar of total surrender to God, the God who demands that as followers, we must relinquish the desire that most of us have to be in charge, amen, and allow God to reveal God's self and God's power in us, not according to our instructions, but according to his plan and according to his way. And the promise is that his plans for us will manifest in such a way that we will know that it's God. He, his plans for us uh, will manifest in such a way that we will discover what it means to be spiritually stable, to be spiritually whole, to be mentally healthy and emotionally connected to God and God's truth. When we stop fighting to be in charge, amen, and let God take over, we will find that our relationship with God will grow deeper and wider. You can say amen. amen. Now, I've also found that many of us are guilty of not only wanting God to let us control our lives, but we're guilty of wanting, uh, we, uh, we're guilty of wanting God to control others for us. I suspect that we have all had opinions about other folk and what God needs to be doing, you know, with other folk. We have opinions about what they should wear, how they should think, how they should spend their money, and who they should become. Even though one cannot control, we can't necessarily control our own emotions, or, uh, uh, and there are some folk who can't control their own emotions, their own tongue, or their own accent. They are quick to want to have a say about how other people should act and think and speak. Uh, folk, we want to control other folk. Parents often try to control children, and children will try to control parents. Amen. Many are not in relationships today because a spouse or a boo tried to control them, and they weren't having it. Those in power often try to control those that they identify as powerless. We see that in Washington, D.C. There are those that we might call friend who will not be our friends if they can't control us. Say amen. So while the need to control uh, our own lives is often grounded in our fears, the need to control the lives of others is not only grounded in fear, but it is often birthed out of uh, insecurity, birthed out of jealousy and personal ambition. The desire to control others is an arrogant need to dominate, infringe on the rights of others, and safeguard our own perceived power. One writer says that the desire to control others is driven by the need to feel safe and relieve our own anxiety. And some psychologists say that the people who want to control others will often use intimidation, manipulation, and degradation to get their way in other words, to keep others in a place of control. Now, such was the case with the Pharisees that we read about in the text today. Uh, as you look at this pericope, you will find that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to fulfill his divine purpose to become savior of the world. 
as he walked toward Bethphage and Bethany at the hill of the Mount of Olives, the, the Bible tells us that he sends two of his disciples into the village and they t he told them to find him a colt that he could ride into the city. And the Bible says that when they brought him the colt, he mounted it and the people spread their cloaks on the road as he entered into Jerusalem. The spreading of the cloaks on the road was a sign that they revered this man Jesus. And the colt was a symbol of peace. See, Jesus rode the colt, the colt, C-O-L-T, to show that he not only came in peace, but he came as a servant to bear the sins of humanity. Uh, he was, uh, Jesus came in the city as he did to let it be known that he totally embraced his role as the promised Messiah. And so the Bible says that as he traveled the road, a crowd of thousands lined the road and they began to joyfully praise God in loud voices, Luke says, for the miracles that they had seen. They were excited. They were so filled with awe that they filled the air with much praise for the Savior. And they shouted, Blessed be the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now, church, this was a high moment. It was a high moment, but it was also a disturbing moment for the Pharisees. Because you see, the Pharisees were threatened by Jesus' power and favor with the people. Now, if you will read in John chapter 12, verse 19, you will see where the Pharisees declared, there is nothing we can do with these people. It is out of control and the world has gone after him. Amen. So... These, these Pharisees, now they had already determined that they wanted to do away with Jesus, but seeing his triumphant entry uh, into the city only solidified their fear of him and their determination to destroy him and his public image, though they had tried to stop him up to this point and they had never been able to stop him. And now, amen, what did they say? The, the whole world is gone after him. And they were seeing change and they were seeing liberation and they were seeing a kind of uh, clinging to the Lord Jesus that they could not take. And they wanted it to stop. They, of course, had the good sense to know that they could not control the crowd. That was out of the question because the crowd, as they said, was out of control. And so they tried to control Jesus by telling Jesus to control the crowd. They tried to tell Jesus what to do. Now, I'm going to pause here and just say, yes, we talk about uh, these Pharisees and we talk about the futility of trying to control Jesus, but uh, uh, they couldn't control Jesus. They'd never been able to control him because you see from his time here on earth, help us, Lord, Jesus made it clear that he was not controlled by any segment of humanity, but he was only controlled by God. You can say amen. What did he say? He said, I can myself do nothing because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. He also said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work.
I will not seek my own will, but the will of the Father. And he said, and, uh, and then, of course, we know that uh, the Lord's ways were never humans' ways. Amen. And, and humans could never control or alter the ways of Jesus Christ. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law often tried to intimidate the master, but they just could not stop him. They consistently questioned his authority, but he consistently refused to be under their control. In fact, uh, his desire, when, when, when God sent him, God's desire was that the world would bow at the feet of Jesus. Am I right? And Jesus was never, ever to be governed by the whims or the preferences of humanity. He came only to serve his Father who was in heaven. Jesus came to bring in the new. Amen. He came to dismantle, listen, tradition-centered spirituality. He came with a divine creativity and a spiritually enriching agenda that would bring, the, bring in everybody. He would not exclude, amen, the uh, unlikely or the overlooked. Jesus came to touch unclean lepers, bleeding women, and dead bodies, which was totally against religious tradition. Amen. He came to uh, uh, eat with sinners and foreigners. He came to draw humanity closer to God. And we find out through looking at the life of Jesus that sometimes drawing people closer to God means defying tradition and offending those who are wed to old ways and who are committed to safeguarding their positions in the old and safeguarding their sense of importance uh, uh, that they uh, might lose if they allow, if they make room for change, amen. And sadly, there have always been those who have tried to control the Jesus movement. Amen. There have been those in the church then and even today who want to control Jesus' mission to expand the kingdom just because they want to protect their perceived seats of power. There is plenty good room in the kingdom, and we must be those who understand how absurd it is to try to control Jesus so that you can have your way. Amen. And so it was crazy that day that the Pharisees would try to tell Jesus what to do because Jesus would never defer to the lustful cravings of a broken humanity. It is clear that these men had a vision for religion, but they had no vision for people. They had a vision for structure, but they had no vision for the greater good. They had a vision for religious politics, but they had no vision for liberation. Amen. And before we judge them, I would suggest that many of us uh, would take a look at ourselves, amen, and see whether or not we have been guilty of wanting to control Jesus so that Jesus could control other folk. 
we would, uh, Lord, have we been guilty of trying to tell you what we want and how to bless us and how to bless them or how to punish them, Lord? Have we uh, uh, been those who will pray, Lord, have your way? But in actuality, we have very strong opinions about how Jesus should move in the lives of other people and how Jesus should move in the world. And yes, we're supposed to be thinkers, and yes, we're supposed to be political analysts of sorts, but we should never, ever uh, be those who tell Jesus to kill, uh, to kill other people. <laughs> No, no, we should never do that. We should never, ever, 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 ever be guilty of asking God to follow our instructions. God loves everybody. I'm serious, y'all. God loves everybody. God loves everybody. Turn to your neighbor and say, God loves everybody. Now the Pharisees wanted Jesus to make No, no. Turn to your neighbor and say the Lord loves everybody. The Lord loves everybody. And we are not those who can determine how God moves in the lives of other people and how God moves in the lives uh, of those that we don't particularly uh, care for. And that's everybody. We have enemies. Uh, we have frenemies. We have people, amen, who... Uh, 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 we would like to see the Lord handle, but we always want to see the Lord handle other people in our way. Amen. But we cannot control who Jesus is, and we cannot control how Jesus moves in the lives of others. The Pharisees wanted Jesus. Let's come back to Palm Sunday. The Pharisees wanted Jesus to make the crowds stop their praise. They were in denial about the truth of who Jesus was. And so they felt, help them Jesus, that they had the right to make those who were praising him behave. Mm -mm. When we cannot control people, we often call on Jesus uh, to make Jesus do it for us. And, and often what we want Jesus to do is not his will. Say amen, everybody. And Jesus will ignore our instructions because like I said, his ways are higher than our ways. Our thoughts are so far from his thoughts. And just as Jesus ignored the pleas of the Pharisees, Jesus will ignore our pleas if we are uh, 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 having thoughts that are antithetical to his will and his way. So when the Pharisees told Jesus to silence the crowd, Jesus ignored them because on that day, praise had to happen. Somebody say it had to happen. And though we know that later in that same week, many in the crowd turned against Jesus because they had uh, 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 praise on their lips, amen. Uh, you know that by, Palm, uh, by Good Friday, many of them uh, had gone from praise to crucify him. But see, we can see that some in that crowd may have had that praise on their lips, but they did not have Jesus in their hearts. They may have gotten caught up in the excitement of that Palm Sunday crowd, but they had no relationship, no previous experience with Jesus. But I do believe, saints, that there were some in that crowd 
whose praise was for real. I can imagine that in that crowd there may have been some who had been fed on the mountainside that day. Many, uh, there were about 5,000 of them, but Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and he fed over 5,000 people. So I suspect that maybe some of them were in that crowd and that hopefully their praise did not change uh, to crucify him. Or maybe there had been some family members and or neighbors of the lepers that had been healed and cleansed or friends or family members of the de, uh, demoniacs who had been delivered. Scripture records that there were some in that crowd who had witnessed the resurrection of a very dead Lazarus. And surely there was some there who had experienced that inner transformation that had changed their lives. And I just want to believe that their shouts were for real. Their shouts were loud and their praise was strong. And the religious ones told Jesus to silence their praise. But Jesus was not about to tell them to stop. In fact, he tells them that his praise was ordained by God, uh, that it was ordained by God that there would be praise on that day. And he said uh, very clearly, now, if these do not praise me, the very rocks are going to cry out. You see, for those of us who follow Jesus, we understand that praise is a necessary ingredient for our lives. Amen. Amen. Our praise cannot be controlled by circumstances, nor can our praise be controlled by people. If we don't praise, oh my God, uh, the rocks... There will be people, there will be praise because praise is unstoppable. Their the nature will praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Folk that we don't even know, you can pass the street, uh, pass on the street corner, and you will see praise. But Praise is a necessary ingredient in our lives. We praise him in good times, and we have to praise him in bad times. We praise him at home. I hope we praise him at home. We praise him at church. We praise him in public, and we praise him in private. Our praise can never be contingent on public opinion or other controlled ways of being. Other control, others trying to tell us how to praise. See, our praise should be out of control. Out of control praise is bold and persistent and unrestricted. Out of control praise will not be dampened or squelched by the insecure, the negative, or the unspiritual. Our praise is out of control because it cannot be, should not be controlled by anyone or anything. Our praise should be from the heart, and when our hearts are filled with praise, amen, uh, when our hearts are filled with praise, then we cannot be intimidated by attempts to silence or suppress us. When praise is not controlled by tradition, when praise is not controlled by the fear of other people, the Lord inhabits that praise. You ought to say thank you. And when the Lord inhabits our praise, it releases a power that is undeniable, and sometimes it will irritate those who would rather you do life and worship according to their understanding. 
I have often wondered, uh, preachers, if the Pharisees would have been less offended if the crowd had not been so boisterous, but rather if they had all fallen to their knees or they were standing there with their hands lifted or maybe even laying prostrate on the ground. Uh, I wonder would they have still been irritated. And let me tell you, I suspect that they would. See, because the noise, uh, yes, the noise was irritating to them. Uh, what was really irritating to them was the object of the praise. Jesus, amen. In John, they said the whole world has gone after him. That means everybody is following him. So what they really hated uh, was that people seemed to be totally uh, sold out for Jesus. Now, there are days, there are times and situations in all of our lives when we cannot refrain from praising God. But you know, you don't always have to be loud. See, sometimes when a plane lands safely or when your child, you hear them coming through the door uh, and the whole house is asleep or when you get a good doctor's report, clearly praise is what we should do. But I have found out that praise can be bubbling over in your spirit, but you don't have to make a sound. Say amen, everybody. See, uh, you can have a quiet praise. You can just lift your hand or you can be walking through the hall from the doctor who's giving you that good report and you can just be saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But do you know that that still annoys Satan? He's still annoyed with your quiet praise. See, Praise, uh, 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 sometimes there has to be propriety and decorum that would dictate that we restrain ourselves in the presence of other folk or in certain situations. But if you say thank you, Jesus, in your heart when that plane lands or when, uh, or, or, or when that uh, 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 job promotion comes, you can sit quietly at your desk and you can invade the heavenlies till demons tremble, but you don't have to open your mouth. Tell the truth. Amen. The enemy is still angry with that praise, and he would rather that your praise cease. I would have to say that when you process how Jesus formed you in your mother's womb, or how Jesus has assigned purpose to your life in spite of your flaws. When you think of how God delivered you from the snare of the fowler time and time again, how God has delivered you from the spirits of deception and death, uh, I know that they, uh, just to think about it will sometimes make you want to uh, 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 run around wherever you are, but there are times that you can't run around, but your spirit is having a marathon because you uh, mm. say amen, somebody. Amen. See, we can, we, we, we can just kind of hold it in till we get home or till we get in our car, and then you can let it all hang out. And it's not that you are afraid of other people, but there is a sense of decorum that we all observe. Amen. Uh, and so we just say that our praise cannot be controlled. Amen. Amen. Uh, you can't stop me. Teachers, they, can't, they took prayer out of school. But they cannot stop you from walking around your classroom inviting the presence of the Lord. Say amen, everybody. They took prayer out of the school. Amen. But sometimes you just have to call somebody up to your desk and just kind of lay a hand on their head and rebuke the demons of low self-esteem and the demons of 
a street mentality and ask God to come in. They can't control our praise. Say amen, somebody. Sometimes you have to shout, but sometimes you don't even have to say a word because if Jesus is in the depths of your spirit, if Jesus is in your heart, say amen, everybody. Amen. The rocks won't have to say a word because you, hallelujah, have taken authority in the spiritual realm and you have invited Jesus in. Didn't I tell you that he will inhabit the praises of his people? Oh, come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together and declare that I will praise him in season. I will praise him out of season. I will praise him loudly and I will praise him silently because praise is a necessity in the life of a believer. Let the church say amen. And let me say this, just like the crowd that day, uh, we cannot allow, we should not uh, uh, be bothered, not one bit, by insecure and doubting Pharisees. And whenever there are those around us who would seek to control or monitor your praise, you have to let them know that your determination is to keep the praise going because you know that you have been kept, you have been cleansed, you have been covered, you have been forgiven, you have been called, you have been anointed, you have received favor, and you cannot tell me how to handle my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the character of a true praiser, a true worshiper, must be genuine and without pretense, pretense. Praisers are those who must connect with God sincerely and are willing to grow in and apply the knowledge of the word, their knowledge of the word of God. Praisers are those who will intentionally direct their thoughts toward the Lord and center in on who he is. Real praise, when praise is for real, it does not cease, amen, when the winds of adversity or the winds of objection blow. You may be persecuted, you may be in the midst of a broken relationship, but praise should always be a part of your lifestyle. And divine submission should always happen in our lives. See, that's where we need to be every day of our lives. Amen. There are moments when we could all stop praising God because of situations that are, have arised in, in our lives. But when your praise is not controlled by situations, when your praise is not controlled by rumors, and when your praise is not co controlled by broken promises, uh, broken uh, uh, relationships, then that praise will continue to flow out of your heart. Somebody say my heart. My heart is filled with the power and the presence of Jesus. And then let me say this. Uh, Augustine says that to glorify God is the reason we were given life. In other words, you were born to praise him. And genuine praise means that we do not exalt ourselves and we do not exalt other human beings, but rather we praise God more and more and more. The kind of praise uh, that we uh, 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 that we praise now should be deeper 
and should be more solidified in our spirits than the praise we had 10 years ago. Amen. Because God has been consistent in our lives. Am I right? The truth of the matter is the days that we wanted to give up and the times that we thought that God had forsaken us, when we look back and see how God worked in it and, and how God weaved uh, uh, stuff together and how God just pulled us in and God promoted us and God blessed us. God didn't answer our prayer like we wanted him to answer it. Ah, oh, but we can say thank you, Jesus. Anybody in here ever thanked him for not answering the prayer? Amen. But for doing exceedingly abundantly more in our lives. That's why our praise just keeps getting deeper and stronger. The more we praise God, the more we keep God on the throne of our hearts. The more we praise God, we affirm the fact that God is sovereign and we trust him. He is the all-sufficient one who fills our lives with good things. Somebody say good things. I'm going to just stop right now and I want everybody whose life has been filled with good things to just jump up on your feet and begin to praise God. Praise him in your own way. Amen. Amen. Bend your will to him. Hallelujah. Submit your way to him. And don't you know that as you praise him, it strengthens your trust. It strengthens your faith and it strengthens your obligation and your commitment to live for the Lord. Lift your voices in praise. Or maybe you just want to clap your hands. Maybe you just want to rock. Maybe you just want to bow your head and begin to thank God. But would you celebrate the goodness of Jesus? Would you celebrate his agenda in your life? Would you celebrate his ways? And when you praise him, the chains of fear will be broken. When you praise him, uh, you'll feel closer to him than you did when you came in. Uh, come on, when you praise him, even if it's a bad season in your life right now, if you praise the Lord, uh, you will find his power. You will find his presence. Let praise fill this sanctuary. Not a Palm Sunday praise, but an out of control praise that grows and grows and grows and grows and gets deeper. Praise him, church. Praise him in the morning and praise him at noonday. Praise him, hallelujah, when the sun goes down. Celebrate your life. Celebrate his goodness. Celebrate every blessing. Thank you, Jesus. For every mountain he's brought you over, for every trial he's seen you through, for every heartache that he's healed, give God praise. Come on, open your mouth. Don't let the devil control your praise. Don't let your circumstances control your praise. Hallelujah. Don't let your fear control your praise. Lift your hands. Open your mouths. Rock if you need to, but tell God you are great and greatly to be praised. Cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what's going on in your row. This is between you and the Lord. Hallelujah. The person next to you may have their arms folded, but don't be controlled by their refusal to praise. You lift your hands. You give God praise because praise is what we do. Praise is who we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody 
declare I'm hurting, but I'm praising God. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I'm praising him. Because I know he holds tomorrow. Come on, come on. This is Palm Sunday. But our praise will be consistent. Our praise will not end with our Good Friday experiences. Our praise will not end when things don't go our way. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I may not be able to pay all my bills this month, but his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I may not know where my brother or my sister is. They're out there in the street, but his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I may not have a job next week, but his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The doctor's diagnosis was a little frightening, but his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I trust in God. I know he's able. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I understand today that God is good all the time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes his boast in the Lord. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He's been my healer. He's been my deliverer. He's been my burden bearer. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Control your praise. Because when the Holy Ghost is leading you, when the Holy Ghost is calling to your remembrance the things of God, you will not be able to hold back, but you will have to shout to God with a voice of thanksgiving because you understand, thank you, Jesus, that there is nothing too hard for our God. I need this church. Thank you, Jesus. Even before you get your palms, you need to lift a Palm Sunday praise. We're not controlled by anything but the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Say yes. Say yes. This looks so good to me to have a praising church. Hallelujah. This looks so good because I know that he's inhabiting this place. He inhabits the praise of his people. That means that demons are fleeing. Hallelujah. That means strongholds are crumbling. Hallelujah. That means your enemies are going to have back up because he is inhabiting the praise of the saints of the most high God. Somebody put somebody put him. Praise him like you got a reason. Praise him like you got a reason. I got a reason to push. I got a reason to push. I got a reason to push. Y'all say, I got a reason to push. I got a reason to push. I got a reason to push. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at the person next to you. Just testify to them. Tell them I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Come on, if you've got a reason, turn to your neighbor. Tell them I've got a reason to praise him. I praise him for what he's done. I praise him for what he's done good in my life. But I also praise him for what he's getting ready to do. Anybody have prophetic expectation in the room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, take a few more moments. Open up your mouth. Lift your hands. And celebrate your God. God if you've got a reason to praise him. Yeah. I got a reason. Hallelujah to Jesus. Listen, if you're here today, I'm going to invite our leaders, our ministers to come to the altar. If you're here this morning, hallelujah. What praise, what praise essentially calls us into is a response because of what God has done in our life. And listen, if you're here in this room, Jesus has died to save you from hell, from death, from the grave. Even though we celebrate Palm Sunday, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate it because it is already complete that the work is already done. And if you're here this morning, you have not received that into your heart. You have not received that into your life. If you've never made Jesus the king of your heart, we invite you to come to the altar. We want to connect with you in prayer that you will make the greatest decision you will ever make to trust God with your heart. Hallelujah, the altar is open for you. Secondly, if you're here this morning and you have given your life to Christ, but you've fallen away, you've backslid, and you feel like, you know, I've gotten a little bit off course, and you want to realign yourself with the will of God for your life, I invite you to come. Don't let this moment pass by without taking a moment to connect with someone in prayer and realigning your life with Jesus Christ. Don't let this just be your good charity for the day or your good charity for this season, but come connect with someone in prayer that you can be drawn closer to the Lord if you're here. Lastly, if you're here and you don't have a church home, if you don't have a body of believers that you're connected with, who are loving on you, who you are connected to, that you can call on, we invite you to make our home your home if you want to do that right now. The altar is open for you. What I want to ask you to do, if you would help me, but those of you who are in the pews, help me this morning in the entrance of time. Would you be a fisher of men? Would you turn to your neighbor and ask them three questions? Ask them, are you saved? Ask them, are you sure? And then ask them, do you have a church home? If they say no to any of those questions, would you take a moment, take them by the hand, tell them, I don't want you to miss this great opportunity for your life. Walk them to this altar. Bring them for prayer. Bring them that they can connect with the Lord, that their life would be transformed in this moment. I see you coming. I see you coming. They're coming. Come on, keep fishing. Keep fishing. Turn to the person on the other side. Ask them. Ask them, do you know Jesus? Are you sure? And do you have a church home? Don't let this moment slip by. Don't let this moment slip by without connecting with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm going to pray a quick prayer. And if you're here and you want to come to the altar, it is still open for you. The moment is still here. Don't let it pass by without giving your life to Jesus Christ, without securing, securing your salvation. That's it. That's it. Come on, sister. Come on. Without, without securing your salvation today, don't let this moment pass by and not reconnect with what God has planned for your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have to call on you. We thank you, oh God, that we are yours. We were made in your image and after your likeness. You knew us while we were being formed in our mother's womb. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that today would be a moment of reconciling, that we would reconcile to your original plan. God, to do great things for us, 
to use us in mighty ways and to call us back to yourself. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would plant so deep within our soul, oh God, hallelujah, your spirit, a remembrance, a knowledge of who you are, that it would only erupt in uncontrollable, outrageous praise, oh God, in response to the great things that you've done in our life. We love you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. If you're here at the altar, we don't want you to rush this moment. If you're here at the altar, don't rush this moment. We want you to walk with our ministers. You can go out of the doors to my left and to your right for further prayer. Hallelujah to Jesus. We're going to go out of this place in this same spirit of praise. I just want to give you a couple of notes. This is Palm Sunday, and because of that, we are distributing palms. They are located by the doors as you exit out of the church today. Let's just lift our hands to the Father for quick benediction. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. To him be all glory. To him be all honor. To him be all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people shout hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Lift your voice and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. God bless you. Go in peace. All are encouraged to attend our weekly Bible studies, young adults on Mondays, church-wide on Wednesdays, men on Thursdays, and couples on Saturdays. All Bible studies are virtual and begin at 7 p.m. Visit the website for login and streaming details. Holy Week begins today with Palm Sunday and continues tomorrow night, Monday, March 25th, with our four women at the cross service at 7.30 p.m. With preachers Rev. Dr. Sharika Newton, Pastor T.N. Brown-Williams, Pastor Melaine Rochford, and our very own Marissa Farrow. Then join us for our Monday Thursday service, March 28th, with guest preacher, Pastor Jerry Carter, and Good Friday on March 29th at 12 o'clock p.m., featuring a few of GAC's ministerial staff. Holy Week will culminate on Resurrection Sunday, March 31st, and the conclusion of our Lenten fast. The Sunday School presents its annual Resurrection Sunday program, Easter Sunday, March 31st, during the 11.30 a.m. service in the lower level of the cathedral. Following the program, the Sunday School will host a bake sale. All proceeds go towards the Sunday School College Scholarship Fund for graduating seniors. The North Carolina Club is hosting a defensive driving course on Saturday, March 30th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Allen Senior Citizen Complex Building A. This is a certified course enabling you to deduct up to 10% off of your insurance premium and points off of your driver's license. You can contact one of the listed members of the North Carolina Club for details and registration. The Allen Liturgical Dance Ministry and Fitness Ministry will host a praise party and fitness fundraiser March 30th from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. Workouts include praise and worship, chair exercises, yoga, and African dance. Tickets will be available in the Cathedral Bookstore and all proceeds will go towards the mortgage elimination. The Communications Archival Committee is seeking volunteers to help gather, sort, and organize photographs and digital media to be used for the upcoming legacy celebrations and across our digital platforms. Committee registration will open next week. Ladies, join us for Women's Conference April 11th through the 13th at the Stamford Marriott in Stamford, Connecticut. Registration is still open. You can register online at www.gacwomen.org. On Tuesday, April 23rd, the Cancer Support Ministry will have a free mammogram screening bus in the cathedral parking lot from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Contact the church office to register. Save the date for the Legacy Luncheon, Saturday, May 18th at Floral Terrace at 12 o'clock p.m. Tickets will go on sale Monday, April 1st, in person and online. The Flake Legacy Weekend will take place Friday, May 31st to Sunday, June 2nd. Join us for an exciting weekend of nostalgic gatherings and sharing and creating fond memories with cherished friends and family as we honor and celebrate the enduring impact of the Flake Legacy on our lives. Friday night, various ministries will celebrate in their own special way. Then on Saturday, we will host a Legacy Community Day starting with prayer at 10 a.m. followed by special celebrations in parking lot two. The weekend will culminate on Sunday with guest preacher Bishop Jacqueline McCullough. 
For more information regarding our virtual, hybrid, and on-site events, please visit our website at www.allencathedral.org. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We invite you to stay connected with us on our website at allencathedral.org and across our social platforms, including our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Give tithes and offerings on our website and mobile app, which can be downloaded from the iTunes store and Google Play. Visit our website and listen to our daily prayers, watch Bible studies, see featured videos, and more on our mobile app and the church website. Subscribe to receive our weekly digital event calendar and text alerts by going to the church website at allencathedral.org and follow the prompts to subscribe. You are invited to join us on our live prayer line weeknights at 8 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. where you will hear from Pastor Elaine Flake and friends. The dial-in details are available on our website. Again, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. Our church doors are open. We would love to worship with you in person Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. There is a seat for you, so join us. We continue to keep your safety and health in mind. So stay connected throughout the week, and we look forward to worshiping with you again next week. To God be the glory.